more than 2,000 is it? Look at it now, I'm telling you what it is now. So finally, just as promised, Big Brother has meted out his punishment on the Shanga Eye housemates. And guys, <laughs> this one is bloody. This one is wild. Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Glory Elijah, and this is Frankly Speaking with Glory. I am the only girl with the tea. And on this episode, I will be spilling all the details about the punishment, the type of punishment, the details of it all um, that Biggie has meted out to the Shanya Eye housemate with regards to their infringement on the microphone rules of the house and also with whispering and many other things that they have done. Um, I actually spilled all of those details in my previous video, so please check them out. And also on this video, I will be telling you all about the drama of the live nomination itself. And guys, the live nomination itself was very, very strategic and it has caused a lot of questions, conversations, controversy on social media. So we will be having that discussion on this particular episode. So don't go anywhere. Make sure you watch this video to the end without skipping one bit so you do not miss out on any part. Let's start. Now, the punishment that Biggie serves to the housemate is not the usual, not the regular picking of beans, counting of rice, and you know, stuff like that. Guys, this time around, this one is more. Should I say brain tasking, physically tasking? It's really, really emotionally draining. And it came with a number of rules that <laughs> if these housemates break those rules, it would attract more severe punishment from Big Brother. Now, what Biggie did was he provided a lot of popsicle sticks, guys. For those of you who do not know, this is it right here on the screen, um, popsicle sticks. And according to Big Brother, they are to paint each and every one of those sticks one at a time. And they are to share the popsicle sticks amongst themselves equally. We all know how much these housemates love their afternoon naps. So this time around, there is no sleep for any single housemate today as Big Brother has instructed that no housemate is allowed to sleep until every single popsicle stick has been painted. Biggie also instructed that they are not to take any break whatsoever except when they have their diary session and task or when they are summoned by Big Brother himself into the diary room. Another instruction that came with the punishment is that the housemates are not to dip the sticks directly into the paint, you know, because some of them might, might want to cheat and just dip the sticks so that everything will be covered. No, Biggie instructed that specifically each popsicle stick is to be treated as a masterpiece, as a work of art. Guys, what does that mean? How do you treat a work of art? When you paint one, you wait for it to get dry, you ensure that it is beautiful, neat, not tainted at all, with any extra paint here and there. Guys, this is the punishment that Biggie has meted out to those housemates. And guys, they are finding it difficult already. For people like Boma, they are already grumbling. <laughs> they are already uncomfortable because the popsicle sticks are quite small in size. So imagine using that very, very tiny, extremely thinly mouthed paint brush you know, to create strokes of paint or designs on those sticks, guys. It is really tedious and tasking. And we are already feeling the brunt of it on these housemates as they are getting exhausted already. Now, in as much as I feel sorry for these housemates, guys, a part of me is actually jumping for joy. <laughs> like, I'm really excited about this punishment because, trust me, Biggie has been overly, overly lenient with these housemates to a fault. From day one, they've been breaking the rules all over the place. And guys, it makes you wonder that what is the essence actually of reading the rule book when you know you will not adhere to the rule book? It doesn't really make sense. And so guys, the first punishment Biggie gave to them, they cruised over it, you know, because it was a selection of rice and beans and Biggie allowed it to slide. But this time around, I am really hoping that Biggie is going to make sure that they see it to the finish so that when their back begins to ache, the next time they want to whisper, they will tie their mouth. The next time they want to remove microphone and gossip, they will tie it to around their neck like it will, so that the thing will not go anywhere. No, but for, for real guys, I feel like this is one of the best things that Biggie should have done from day one. But then, hey, it's never too late, right? Now, moving on to the live nominations. Of everything that happened during the nomination process, guys, 
two nominations, two housemates nominations in particular completely shocked me. And guys, the reason for that is because just yesterday morning and afternoon, these set of people, they spent so much time bonding, getting to know one another, gossiping about the ladies in the house, you know, sharing secrets, sharing stories, and even talking about the future outside the house. In other words, these set of people, they were able to seal the bond to their bromance yesterday. But then they got into the dairy room for their live nomination exercise and then they roasted one another on the altar of Big Brother's Big Brother's instructions. Guys, it was wild. It was crazy. I'm talking about Boma and Perry. Guys, I did not see that coming. So Boma had nominated JMK and Perry. And I was wondering like, okay, what did JMK ever do to you? I mean, this is the same JMK that you did some rumble and tumbling with under the sheets the first two days that she got into the house. I mean, what's the deal? And then you've been making slight joking advances at her and whatever did she even do to you, Boma? And then talking about his nomination of Pere, guys, Pere and Boma, they've been bonding like mad. Guys, I don't even understand how to put it. Boma kind of was sucking up to Pere, sucking up to Maria, kissing their ass. Even his outburst at Maria last night, it shocked me because I was thinking that, ah, this girl actually selected you as deputy. Maybe you're going to be a friend as you've always been, you know, saying yes, ma, yes, ma. Because that was basically what Boma was doing all through last week. As if he did not have a mind of his own. He was basically answering yes and bootlicking Maria all over the house. So when, when Boma nominated Pere, I was actually shocked, guys. But as if I hadn't had enough of shockers for the night, Pere went into the diary room and nominated Michael and Jay Paul. Now, guys, can someone tell me exactly why Pere is always constantly nominating Jay Paul? I don't know, but it seems as though Pere does not like that boy. Because for some weird reason, every time it comes to nomination, Pere is always nominating Jay Paul. Can somebody explain why? Because at this point, I am lost. I don't understand. It's not like they have like some sort of deep connection. That probably could be the reason. But then, is that the only person? And guys, it's actually weird because I don't know if Pere is actually seeing Jay Paul as a threat or a competition or he's only seeking to eliminate um, people that he doesn't really have a bond with in the house, guys. I have no idea. And I was also surprised that for the first time, <laughs> Perez skipped nominating white money. In my mind, I was like, okay, <laughs> what changed your mind? But then, aside all of that, Perez's nomination of Michael, it completely shook me because, guys, all through the week, Perez and Michael, they've been like this. And they are constantly talking about how to lay a woman, how to catch a woman in her tricks, how to get a woman under their thumb, how to get the girls in the house, how to get the girls to agree to the advances, you know, to get sexual and erotic. They've been plotting and planning. I mean, the bromance has been deep. Saga's nomination of Queen was the one that really, really infuriated me. Guys, I understand every housemate, they have a right to nominate who they deem fit, you know, to put up for eviction. But then, sagas don't really, really upset me. I almost took it personal because I felt betrayed on behalf of Queen. And guys, on Sunday, Ibuka had asked Queen questions and it had put her on the spot. The housemates had made a jest of her. They had made a mockery of, you know, her affections for, or her attraction, rather, for Pere, Boma, and White Money. So, Queen was down all through Sunday and even yesterday, Queen was really down. So, while White Money was trying to talk her out of it, console her, JMK was also talking to her, Saga voluntarily offered himself to be that big brother figure, you know, talking to Queen, advising her, giving her a shoulder to lean on. The other housemates weren't really doing much at that point in time, but Saga was really doing all of that, giving her that pillar of support that she needed at that point in time. And then, guys, in my mind, I thought, that Saga was actually bonding with Queen, only to see nomination period and Saga was nominating Queen. I said, brah, Omo, you are wicked though. <laughs> brah, I fear who no fear you. In fact, I fear you, fear your shadow, fear your eye, fear your muscles, fear all your biceps. Because guys, that was me. Come on, that was me. One of the most confused housemates for yesterday's live nomination show, guys, that person was none other than Lee Corus. 
Trust me, I've never ever seen anybody that is as confused as Liquor Rose when it comes to live nominations. Guys, did you see what she did? Like, the girl was just so chaotic. She was just scattered like she was all over the place. It was as if her mind, everything don't scatter, finished. So this is what happened, yeah? She nominated in the diary room, Cross and Peace, right? And then during the save and replace, she now saved Peace and now replaced peace with cross because cross did not stand right so after the whole thing she now went and was apologizing to cross that oh sorry i had no choice it's not that deep don't take it too serious and cross was like it's a game no problem it's a game and she was like oh i have a feeling that you are very very strong outside i have a feeling that you have a strong crowd outside blah, 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 blah. guys fine all of that if follow if follow come but then the question is why did you nominate peace and then you now used your veto power to save her again for real if you did not want to see her up for nomination for possible eviction you shouldn't have even nominated her in the first place so what was that all about guys i mean this girl almost ended up confusing me by saying Banu, i will not fall for all of that i refuse to be confused just as you are confused because guys it was kind of hilarious i was just laughing at how scatter the whole thing was for her anyways guys that's that for this particular episode of frankly speaking with glory elijah the question of this video is which nomination from which housemate shocked you the most please let me know in the comment section below i have mentioned mine three in total so please go ahead and mention yours in the comment section below and i will see you all on another episode of frankly speaking with glory elijah another question of this video guys is are you satisfied with Biggie's punishment to the housemate? If yes, let me know why. And I'll see you all shortly. Have an amazing day. Bye.